This is TK Coleman, and you are tuning in to another episode of TK's Two Cents. Today, we're going to talk about impressing the wrong crowd and analyzing information. Let's dive right in with the first tweet. What would your life look like if you stopped trying to impress the wrong people? Do you know that it is possible to become an all-star at a game that you don't even enjoy playing? Do you know that it's possible to spend your entire life chasing after a dream only to attain it and realize that the dream was never yours to begin with? Why in the world would a person waste away their precious time, energy and resources impressing the wrong people? I'm going to give you two reasons. The first reason is autopilot. There's a lyric to a Kurt Elling song where he says, my friends, every day we go to our everyday work. We come home to our everyday chair. We have an everyday drink, but we never allow ourselves to go into the extraordinary spaces in our hearts and in our minds. I ask you, my friends, how do you think a song is written? How do you think a book is created? How do you think a picture is painted? It can be so easy to get caught up in our routines I go to work, I pay my bills, I make these phone calls, I attend my meetings, and we're busy getting things done, but we never stop to take inventory of the direction in which we are moving. The question is not only am I getting things done, but am I getting things done in a way that's consistent with my why? Or am I just focusing on not being criticized by the people around me? Am I just focused on fitting in with the people around me? Am I just focusing on pleasing everyone else other than myself. Here's a second reason. We all know what it's like to be around people who just don't take our dreams seriously. And so they might tease us. They might poke fun at us. They might mock us or perhaps more indirectly, whenever we talk with enthusiasm about something that inspires us, whether it be a movie, a book or a project, they just don't seem impressed by the things that fire us up and make us feel inspired by life. And The tension that that creates when you're excited about something and the people in your life either make fun of it or they behave in a manner that says I'm unimpressed. You can want so badly, so badly to adjust your life to conform to something that they will think is cool, that they will think is impressive. And because those people are right in your face, because you work with them every day, you live around them every day, you run into them every day, you shop at the same grocery store as them. It can be easy to treat that with a greater priority, but do not confuse the people that are most visible to you with the people that are most important for you to please. One of the best pieces of advice I ever received was decide who you want to be a hero for and ignore everybody else. None of us are perfect. None of us have flawless concept of what it means to live a good life. But if you are not living out your concept of a good life, then you have no chance whatsoever. Because if you live out someone else's concept of a good life, two things will happen. Either you'll attain it and realize that's never what you wanted in the first place, so you wasted your time, or you won't attain it and you'll spend your whole life chasing after something that you don't even want. Please don't live on autopilot. Please don't cater to the people around you who are unimpressed by your dreams, but live according to your own preferences, your own priorities, and your own principles. When you stop trying to impress the wrong people, you can finally experience the joy and the fulfillment and the personal power that comes from being in agreement and in alignment with your own core. What would your life look like if you stopped trying to impress the wrong people? Let's go to tweet number two. All right, a little note on critical thinking here. Every source of information is dangerous if you don't think critically and creatively about how you apply it in your life. Books are like fire, powerful, useful, nourishing, illuminating, and utterly capable of destroying you if you turn your brain off and dive in. Content consumption is not a substitute for critical thinking. Just because you are good at opening up a book doesn't mean you should turn off your brain. Just because you spend hours upon hours listening to podcasts doesn't mean that you should not weigh those ideas against your own experiences. Just because you are reading a bunch of blogs doesn't mean you should mindlessly absorb the advice that that is given to you by someone just because of their status as a thought leader. At the end of the day, You must own the outcomes of your life because you are the one 
that will bear the weight of the consequences you experience when you make choices. The people that are writing the books, the people that are putting out, out the podcast, they can't live your life for you. And it's not lost on me that that's true of me too. I can't live your life for you. Everything that I say or anyone else says, you got to weigh it against your own experience. You got to be willing to try things out and experiment and then look at the results that you're getting and accept feedback from reality and revise accordingly. You got to cross reference. Look for the insights of people who disagree with the things that you're reading over here. Look for the insights of people that support it in a different way or who might argue against it. Do your due diligence for the ideas that you are choosing to live by. Always think critically. There is no such thing as a safe resource that you can consume that's not going to involve any risk whatsoever. Because even if you found the perfect book, even if you found the perfect teacher or the perfect podcast, you are still an imperfect person bringing imperfect understandings, imperfect mental models to the experience. And it is always possible to interpret someone else's advice in a way that is so lacking in nuance that you end up hurting yourself more than you end up helping yourself. Should you live in fear? No. Should you be paranoid? No. Should you never entertain other ideas because of the mere possibility that you might get it wrong? Absolutely not. You gotta lean into the fact that life is inherently risky. However, never, ever, ever search out for this perfect resource or this perfect teacher that's never going to tell you anything that you don't have to agree that you don't have to think critically about because even if you find someone that has the same religion as you has the same political philosophy as you has the same economic philosophy as you it's still possible that you can take their ideas and you can hurt yourself because ideas are tools just like anything else and any tool that is misused or not used in accordance with a higher understanding of its purpose is a tool that will destroy your life as quickly as it can build your life. That's TK's two cents on how to stop impressing the wrong crowd and how to analyze information so that you can get the most out of your content consumption. Thanks for tuning in. Please be sure if you're watching on YouTube to hit the like button to be sure to subscribe to the channel for future updates. If you're listening to the podcast, be sure to subscribe, leave a rating, leave a comment. If there's anything you want to hear me talk about in the future or you have any feedback that you want me to hear, any additional thoughts you want to share, leave it in the comments and don't hesitate to share this with a family member or a friend. All right, everybody, keep living freely.